Okay, I will give uh, my third uh, lecture, and uh, this is going to be my last one to uh, finish the algebraic monoid. And in today's lecture, I'm going to only work on the GL2 and uh, SL3 at most. Okay, so let me start from the examples on the GL2 to review what we did in the last time, and also use it as a roadmap to show uh, where uh, we're going. So we're going to consider the G is just the GL2, and uh, the dual group is going to be also the same, GL2. And we consider uh, the standard representation of GL2. So this is uh, the row is just the identity map. Okay, uh, we take a pi, which is the unramified representation on the GL2. So the pi is going to be a constituent of the induced representation from the unramified character. Okay, and in this case, we know that using the Lorentz correspondence, we're going to get a semi-simple conjugacy class in the GL2. So let's denote C pi to be the Sataki parameter. And in this case, it will be chi 1 pi and chi 2 pi, the uniformizers. So let's just simply denote by the alpha and the beta. And we're going to have our standard L function, which is just the 1 over 1 minus alpha times Q to negative S and one minus beta times Q to negative S. Okay. And we have a rational, poly, a rational function like this and we can do the Taylor expansion. Okay. And this is, uh, makes sense when we take that uh, S is the, the real part of S sufficient large, which is the, the convenient domain is depending on the absolute value of alpha and beta. Okay, so now let's look at this part. Okay. Ha we have another way to rewrite this uh, final sum, which is the character takes the values at the alpha beta. So, this is just the character of the symmetrical case power, the case symmetrical power of the row. So the row is the, our standard representation and we evaluate at uh, alpha and beta. Multiply Q to negative Ks. So this is uh, this the key plus, the summation of these k plus one terms. Okay. And in the last lecture we already see if you have a character like this, we can use Carter's theorems. So we can write down this as a linear combination of the Sataki transform of the characteristic functions. And in this case, fortunately, we have this representation is irreducible. And it's very easy to write. We can just directly apply the formula. So this is the characteristic function over those cosets. And uh, we take the sum, the k is the fixed integers. So we run over over this uh, uh, dominant weight, A and B. OK, so this is what happens if you apply the formula. And uh, now on this side, the alpha and the beta is referring to the, the left hand side is just the character of the representation, which is for the GL2C. So it's just plugging this alpha inside of this character formula. So we're going to get a complex number. And on the right hand side, and by the definition, this Sataki transform gives us a characteristic function over the torus, over the T, right? So if we plug in alpha beta here, what we do is we take the integral against this unramified character chi1 and chi2. 
So we have a bunch of the characteristic function over t, and we integral with this character over the torus t, and then this could also give us the complex number. So that is makes sense. This is identity makes sense. So this is uh, what happens. We apply, we plug in the alpha beta on the both sides, the diagonal elements. And now if we replace this term by this formula, I just plug in the character of the, symmetri the key symmetrical part, and now I have uh, two summations here, and now let's just combine them. So we're gonna reduce to one. So we're gonna, uh, the k is a free choice from greater than zero. Okay, so we only have, you take the sum over a and b, Oh, I forgot the Q to the negative. Uh, oh, yeah, I put it here, so it's fine. Okay, so this is another version to express this uh, L functions. And uh, in this picture, we have this uh, characteristic function show up. And now, how about we remove this Sataki transform part? So I'm gonna denote a new function. Which is only have this, uh, the, this uh, linear combination, uh, is the summation of those characteristic functions. And uh, recall one formula we used in the last uh, uh, time is the trace pi f is equal to the Satake f evaluated at the c pi. And here the pi is uh, 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 unramified representation and f is uh, in the hack algebra. Okay. So this is the identity we uh, recording the last time. And now if we apply this formula on the both sides, so we just uh, replace the F, uh, if F is in hack algebra, this is uh, uh, locally compact, it's just the final sum of the characteristic functions. But in our case here, it's gonna be an infinite sum. So we assume that S is sufficiently large, we fix the alpha and the beta. So this is, uh, everything is makes sense. And now let's apply, take the, Let's see what happens if we replace this F by this L. Okay. So if we apply uh, the trace pi, that means that we apply the satake on the right hand side. So if we apply the Satake on the right hand, uh, right hand side, we go back to this step, and we go back to here. Okay, so this is how do we use the, this the L function, uh, how do we use this basic function to get back this L function? Okay, so this is the rough idea what we are trying to do here, even for the general case. And uh, we call this, this, uh, this function is, uh, has a very good properties at this moment. For example, if we, uh, okay, uh, for example, uh, if we take the S is a very special value, this uh, function is, can be much, uh, we actually can get rid of this uh, S part, uh, get rid of this Q part. For example, if we take the S equal to negative one half, and this part is gonna be gone, and you only have, uh, Nothing else, just the sum of this, uh, this is the integral coefficient, the coefficient is just one. So let's take 
s equal to negative half. So we have a no Q part. And now you can see, uh, if we want to know, this, this, now this function is still support on the G. It's the function defined over G, and it's the key by invariant. And uh, from this definition, we also can easily to see what is the support of this, fun this, the support of this function. So this part gives us a support, and uh, if you, we know this, uh, in the general formula, this sum is taking the sum over uh, the dominant co-characters. And we have these constraints, A greater than, B greater than zero. This actually give us those uh, support belongs to some uh, convex cone. So the A and the B is living in this convex cone. This is a strongly, uh, this is a strongly convex polyhedron cone. You don't have, you only have the rays. You don't have the uh, lines here. Okay. And then now we also can simplify this one. To write this as a characteristic function on the matrix, so which is just the two by two matrix of the integral point intersect with the GL2. So we use this uh, uh, arbitrary, two, uh, the arbitrary two by two matrix to parameterize the, the asymptotic behavior uh, for the A, B goes to infinity. GL2F, yeah, 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 thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, has to be F, okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the support of our function, even generated for S. Okay, okay, and from this example, um, we already see uh, the several things here. Uh, first, uh, this is uh, uh, the place we use the Carter theorems. How do we uh, introduce these basic functions here for the standard L function? And uh, apply the trace for the unramified repetitions, we can get uh, the L functions, the unramified L functions. And uh, second, in general, this basic function is the infinite sum. It's uh, summing over this uh, strongly convex cone here. And uh, also the support, uh, the support of this function for this situation, it easily can be described if we use the, and the help, use the help of this two by two matrix. Okay. So this is uh, information we can see from this simple example. And now uh, let's move back to the, our general situation and uh, to see, to write down, using this idea to write down the basic L function to introduce this L for general G and the row. Okay, I keep my notation is using the G for the uh, split, connected split reductive group and pi is still the unramified representation and the row is could be arbitrary uh, complex representation for the dual group. And uh, still the C pi is the Sataki parameters, same notation. And which is a semi-simple conjugacy class in the G check. And we have our L function. It 
is defining in this way. So the row, the image of row is the n by n uh, matrix. So this is the identity matrix with the size n, the order n. And this is also a matrix in the GLN. Okay. So uh, let, now let's see what we did in our example is we expand uh, this uh, rational, uh, rational functions as the infinite sum. So we can use the Newton identity to do this, to do this for, uh, to handle this one, to handle the general case. And now this uh, case symmetrical part is uh, just uh, the case symmetrical representations for the GLN. So this is case symmetrical part composes the representation O, and uh, this gives us a new representations for the G check, and this sum is taking for all the K, and this gives us a formal series for the Q to the negative S. And in order to use the, uh, the Carter's formulas, in order to get something like this, we have a formula for the irreducible characters, which is indexed by the highest weight. So we can do it for these uh, uh, compositions, the symmetrical case power composed of the row. So let's just de uh, decompose this uh, composition as a direct sum of the irreducible representations. Handle this part. Okay, uh, here uh, the lambda is the dominant weight and the v, lam uh, v lambda is referring to the irreducible representation associated to the Hairst, uh, with the highest weight lambda. And this is our representation. And uh, that this is referring to the multiplicities. So basically we have uh, the trace of this uh, uh, symmetrical key composed row is just uh, the direct sum with these multiplicities of the v pi. So that is for key pi. So we decompose this part as the second uh, inner sums. Okay. And for this case, we can uh, use our formula for this part. So we recall the Cato's formula in the last time. Okay, so now I like, come back to the Q minus one. Uh, this is the cast down loose degree polynomials, and uh, in this formula, in this way, this is actually is a polynomials of Q negative one. So if we uh, completely write down this formula, it's just uh, uh, a bunch of the sum of the Q to the negative power. Okay, so if you prefer, you also can write back to as uh, a polynomial of Q inverse. So you can just switch the Parameter. This is what I'm trying to do in the uh, last time, but uh, I will leave this uh, later on. I will leave this as an exercise for you, so I will skip the details here. Okay, and uh, if we plug in this chiral by this term, we will arrive at the same situations like this, but which is more complicated. You already have the two summations here. You need to combine another one here. So I will, probably, I will not write down here, but uh, roughly the idea is you're gonna have a triple sum, and, uh, but this uh, Sataki transform for the characteristic function will show up, like this case. So we still have the same phenomena as the L function is equal to the sum of the infinite sum of this characteristic, uh, Sataki transform of the characteristic functions. 
And uh, we apply the same strategy here. So if we forget this Sataki transform part, and we can get a function defined over the G, which is by key invariant. So for every term here, this term gonna be replaced by this one and composed with this one. I, we want to remove this Sataki part. And the way we do it, we, we apply the inverse of the Sataki transform. So if we do that, this part gonna be gone and all the coefficients of course survived and then it's gonna be a sum over uh, these characteristic functions. So overall, it will be something like uh, falling, but I probably will not uh, completely write down. Okay. okay. So if you combine everything together and this part is gone, so what we have is uh, basically the sum over the lambda and the sum over the mu less than lambda and this Q part uh, and also these multiplicities. So this is what we have for this single term. And we compare with the original one, let's define the L row to be the summation k greater than zero, q, s. So I'm using the LK row to substitute this part. So this is what we do. And now if we apply the trace, we apply the same formulas here. If we apply the trace pi on the both sides, and we're gonna go back to get uh, this unramified L function we start. So if we apply the trace pi, we will add up this uh, Sataki transformation, and uh, we arrive to here, and going back, so we get the L function. Okay, so this is the same, uh, uh, the same loop. Okay, uh, so this is what we arrived. Uh, okay. Even for the general case. And of course, in this situation, the particular interesting point chosen is no longer negative one half. So this is not uh, uh, correct, so I will remove this part. Okay, okay uh, this is the function we call the basic function. This is uh, uh, where we end in the last time. And uh, this is uh, defined over G, and also it's by K in right? Okay. And usually it's not, uh, obviously this is not uh, compact support in general. Okay, okay uh, now from this uh, uh, definitions you can see uh, this basic, the definition of this basic function is very complicated, and uh, the examples we discussed here have a very two interesting features we want to, we, we want, we're wondering if we can extend or not. So for example, the first, uh, uh, can we uh, describe what's the support of this uh, L, this basic function? Okay. 
And we know the support is definitely the union, infinity union of the K double coset. is the cool character. Okay, so this is the dominant cool character. And uh, we just uh, want to figure out uh, exactly what uh, is the subset of this uh, uh, dominant, uh, dominant co uh, co characters can give us uh, the support for this basic function. So in this case, we know this is our answer. And a second, uh, can we find a substitute for this M row? Sorry, not M row, the uh, two by two matrix here. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, two questions. And if we answer the second one, we basically also have a rough idea to what's the support for these basic functions. Okay. So can we find uh, this GL2 will be replaced by the general G. And uh, of course, this, is, this uh, M is also depending on what's the choice of the row. So we want to find a suitable object to replace this part. What? This is G? Yeah, uh, so far I haven't nailed down yet. I will nail down what exactly the G. Okay. This is compact in Emerald. Okay, uh, so this is uh, uh, our question. And before we move on to these questions, uh, for this part, uh, if you uh, using the assumption I introduced, I end up uh, in the last uh, lecture, in the lecture two, I give at least three assumptions on the G and also on the dual group side, also on the row. So if you use that uh, assumption and you actually can have a good, can show this is, uh, support, the zero is actually a strongly convex polyhedron cone. But uh, I will, uh, it's not hard to do that, so I will leave the details for the exercise. And uh, in the second half of my today's lecture, I will more focus on this part to introduce what is the candidate for this M, M row. So, which is the linear algebraic monoid. And uh, the structure is for this one is quite similar. You see, for this uh, two by two matrix, you have the matrix multiplications. Okay, you still have the matrix multiplication. It's a salmon group, contains zero. But not every element has the inverse. So, the, our M row here is also a larger set, which is, contains the G. The G goes to the M row, which will be an open embedding. So this is what we expect. And also, we expect the other structures for the M row can help us to describe the support here. The support uh, we described here. The support of the L. And to do that, let me uh, roughly uh, sketch, uh, service, uh, sketch some uh, properties about uh, uh, linear algebraic monoid. And also uh, recall what is the definition. Okay, 
uh, the linear reporting referring this M itself is uh, an affine algebraic variety. And also, uh, the monoid referring this is a salmon group with the identity. So the salmon group give us a uh, associative morphism. And this uh, give us the, uh, the same group structure, and we also need the identity. Okay, so this is uh, the meaning of the, the definition of the uh, algebraic monoid. So for this salmon group, you have the unit, and the unit is uh, form a group. So let's denote the GM to be the unit of the M. This is going to give us a group, algebraic group. Okay. This is the unit group. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, easiest example is uh, we can take a like uh, the two by two matrix we just discussed. Okay. And uh, the mu is just uh, the matrix multiplication. And the unit group is uh, the GL2. Okay. And uh, next, uh, let me ref uh, re uh, state some, uh, base some properties regarding to the monoid and we can have a roughly feeling about uh, the structures and the relations with uh, uh, the unit group. So the point is, uh, we, if we start from an arbitrary reductive group, you, you always can construct the monoid. For example, you can just take the monoid to be the group itself. It is still a monoid. But this is not helpful. It's not to answer any question we just asked. So to do that, uh, uh, we need uh, some particular group. Uh, we, ha we need to add some, uh, in order to get some interesting monoid, we, sh we have to put some constraints for the G. So this, for example, if we, take the, if we consider G is a irreducible algebraic group, and uh, we want to find uh, a monoid such that uh, the unit group of the monoid is equal to this G. Okay. And uh, we don't want uh, the trivial case, which means that we don't want the G is equal to M. So we want to exclude the G is equal to M. So if we have the G equal to F, uh, the M uh, is, is just uh, too trivial. Okay, um, for this case, we have a constraint for the G. This is happens if and only if the characters over G is not trivial. So for example, you cannot just choose the SL2. I'm thinking is everything here is over algebraic closed field. So if you're taking over SL2, the character over SL2 is just a trivial. And that means the, the irreducible monoid should be just the SL2 itself. 
you don't, we don't want the reducible monoid. If you have the reducible monoid, it's just the two open component, and uh, if you do the analysis, you always do the analysis for one piece. So it's not helpful at all. So we always do the, uh, assume the monoid is irreducible one. So this is a very simple reason why we cannot uh, uh, consider arbitrary uh, group here. We have to add uh, certain constraints. This is just one of the reasons. Of course, we have many reasons uh, uh, to uh, have, the following, have the following recipes to, to, find, to define the G, but this is the one of them. Okay. So in general, we are interested in the phoneme monoid. So I'm gonna, the reductive means uh, the unit group is reductive. And also we want the M is normal uh, as a variety with zero element. Uh, the zero element uh, means the zero element and multiply with every element in M, you get a zero. So that's zero element and also one dimensional center. Okay. Okay. And uh, for the one dimensional center part, uh, going to help us to avoid this condition. So you definitely have a, something interesting, uh, irreducible mon monoid. And uh, in our case, the most monoid we have discussed will be something like this. So this is basically our assumptions for all the monoid we discuss later, except uh, the last one. Okay, okay uh, if we have put this condition, we're gonna have a very uh, nice geometrical properties, structures on this uh, uh, type of the monoid. For example, this is one of the extreme case. If M is smooth, The M is isomorphic to the N by N matrix as the algebraic monoid. Okay. So the F bar is the, the algebra closed field, the characteristic zero, let's fix that. And in this case, if the M is too good, this monoid is too good, and you have a multiplication structure over this M, this is salmon group. So this salmon group is always isomorphic to the N by N matrix, this matrix multiplication. In this sense, uh, if uh, you expect too much on the geometric structure, somehow this is just a very special tab. So in the most cases, uh, you, we don't expect it's a smooth variety. Uh, the M is reductive, means uh, the unit group is reductive group. Sorry? Yeah, this is definition, this is definition. Yeah. Okay. okay, so let's see, uh, this is a statement, this is a statement. If the condition, with under these uh, constraints, and uh, if M, I add extra condition, M is smooth. So, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 we also have the, the GM part is not, uh, yeah, the GM part is also, is, uh, let's see. Oh, the question is, do we have any extra conditions for the GM part? GFM? Uh, is reductive? You mean in this case? Uh, not uh, exactly, I think. So um, I need a, right, not exactly, I think. 
you mean, um, oh, you mean I take two product of the M by N, and the GM will be the two cross of the GM. Uh, yeah, 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 that's right, right, right. Yeah, I, we, we need a, right, we need a, we need a, it's the same, it's, it's simple. We need it simple. We need to have the certain constraints for the GM part also. Okay, sorry. Okay, uh, and um, so let's see. The second is uh, uh, actually, uh, yeah, the second property that I want to recall is uh, um, if you, we don't expect, in general, we don't expect that M is uh, smooth, but uh, uh, if we remove the zero point, and the quotient with the center. This is, I assume this is one dimensional center. So yeah, we can go back to your question after the talk. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, if we remove the center and also, uh, sorry, we remove the zero point and the quotient with the center. And this will be projective. In some sense, this variety is also not that bad. Okay, and for example, if you take uh, uh, the M is like this case, if you remove the zero quotient with the center, you're gonna get uh, the projective space, the P3. Okay, and in general, if you consider uh, the general case, sometimes this is uh, a could be the grass mania. Uh, so this is just uh, uh, some basic uh, properties about the monoid. And now let's see how do we, if we have a, a G and we have a row, how do we construct a suitable M? I mean, the M is suitable to our content. Okay, uh, instead of uh, uh, recalling the whole uh, constructions of uh, Wimberg's uh, monoid, the universal monoid, we're gonna construct a universal monoid uh, first, and then take the, bi take the fiber product to produce uh, uh, the monoid we uh, like. Okay. That's the uh, Engel's recipe. Uh, so in order to do the general case, I will only to do the for the SL3 case. So we t I denote the G prime to be the SL3, uh, the simply connected, and uh, as you see, if you directly put the monoid from the S for the SL3, you get nothing, you just get it itself. So we're gonna enlarge this group later. So I take the T prime to be the torus. And Z prime is the center. So now we can define a new group, G plus, which is the G prime, uh, direct product of the T prime and the quotient with the center. The center is the diagonal embodies, so we have a short exact sequence here. And this is our semi-simple part. And as you see, the character over the G plus is not uh, trivial. Okay. okay, and now uh, let's construct a monoid for this one first, for the G plus. So to do that, uh, the general idea is we will construct a faithful representation, a very large representation for the G plus, and uh, take the closure. 
So uh, the idea is uh, we uh, consider the faithful representation and take the alpha enclosure in the endomorphisms of this map. So let's see, let's do the, let's see the details. So for the SL3, this is rank two. We only have two, you reduce, uh, I mean, you only have two fundamental domains. So the corresponding the two representation. One is the identity. And the other is the dual. Or the exterior square. Uh, you only have uh, you have these two irreducible representations, and they're corresponding to the two uh, fundamental weight. And now let's, uh, for associated to these uh, two uh, fundamental ways, let's define the two representations for the G plus. Okay, so this is uh, our definition. The omega zero is the longest well element. And in our case, okay, so this is uh, what happens for our case. Okay, and we also have uh, uh, two roots associated to, the two simple roots about the SL3. It's the alpha one, alpha two. And now let's define a faithful representation for this G plus. Okay. And here's our definition. Okay, for the first two coordinates, this is our simple root alpha one, and this is our simple root alpha two, and also we have row one and row two. So this is our row one, and this is our row two. So this is the whole map, and you can do this for any arbitrary semi-simple, uh, simply connected group. Okay, and uh, once we have this move, uh, this also you can check this map is uh, uh, injective. So you're gonna have the G plus is asymorphic to the image here. And uh, now this is a, now let's look at the monoid for this one. For the, this is the product of the two multiplicative group. This is 2GL1 and 2GL3. This is inside of uh, the additive group, the two copies, and also the three by three matrix, two copies. Okay. So this is the uh, first line here. This is the two component for the alpha one. Yeah, I mean, this is for alpha one. This is for alpha two. Oh, 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 <laughs> thank you. You mean this, right? Yeah, yeah, thank you.
Okay. So we're going to define the M plus to be the alpha enclosures of the image instead of the uh, alpha lines, the two alpha lines here, and also the two copies of three by three matrix. So this is the uh, uh, Winberg's universal uh, monoid. Okay. And uh, this uh, monoid satisfies all the conditions we just discussed. It's the normal, uh, the GM part is reductive, uh, and also it's uh, uh, irreducible with zero element with the zero element and also, except the center is not just the dimensional one. Okay. Okay. Uh, the reason we do this is um, we can actually construct, can construct all the other normal flight, flight normal monoid uh, based on this universal one. Okay, uh, to do that, the first of all, uh, let's see uh, for this uh, structure, we have uh, this is one way to uh, write down this image. And to see it clearly, I give you people an alternative way to describe this set, the alpha enclosures. Okay. So I'm gonna uh, change the variables just to replace this by x and y. So this will be arbitrary. Now this, we, this multiplication is a scalar, uh, a scalar multiply a three by three matrix. So this is gonna be, in general, this is lived in the GL3. And this is another matrix of the GL3. So I will describe uh, the equations on the A1, A2, X, Y to determine this image. So this is condition is to describe uh, the main part is the G and the G transpose inverse. You don't have the inverse in the monoid, but you do have the multiplication equal to the identity. So this equation is well, uh, is, uh, well defined for n and three by three matrix. And now let's see uh, what's the, uh, okay, so we have a monoid like this, and you can st think in the following questions. So for example, we have the G plus is uh, the unit group, and uh, this unit group acting on, you can take the G plus cross G plus acting on this monoid by the left and the right multiplication. So that is, uh, uh, we could, decompose the M plus, so this is M plus. As a disjoint union of those coset. And you can count in this case, you're gonna exactly have 11 orbits. Okay. And besides this, you also can do, uh, you also can, we have the G prime, which is SL3, which is the semi simple part of this whole group. And we also can consider the G prime cross G prime X on M. And this action, M plus, this action is also left and right translation. And uh, if we have this uh, translations, we can, uh, we have this action, we can consider uh, the GIT quotients. So I will leave an exercise for you to check this case, but I will show you, let me show you the examples for the SL2 case. Okay, and for the SL2, 
you still can use the same method to construct a, a universal monoid. And in that case, it's uh, very simple. The M plus, in this case, will just do the two by two matrix. And in this case, you still have the uh, unit group will be GL2. And the GL2 acting on the, GL2 cross GL2 act on this uh, two by two matrix, we know you only have three orbits, the other rank. And uh, also we can use the SL2 cross SL2 to act on this one. And in that case, uh, if we take the SL2 cross SL2 acting on this two by two, arbitrary two by two matrix, you can use the determinant to parameterize the orbits. So that is the, exactly the GIT quotient. So that's the meaning of this map. It's very easy to see for the SL2 case. And for this case, if I give you a version like this, and you can check if this, uh, I have two components, two uh, uh, coordinates here, A1 and A2. So is this the code GIT quotient is the determinant of A1 or determinant A2? Is that the correct uh, GIT quotient? But at least from this hint, you can have a rough idea. This will be isomorphic to the alpha line with dimension two. So this is referring to the two determinants. And for this one, you only have one, so this is just the one. And those numbers actually is the rank of this semi group, the semi simple group. Okay. Okay. And so this is, uh, uh, okay, so this is what happens for the universal, uh, universal monoid. And I'm going to use this universal monoid. So our question is we have a group G. And so far, at least we can fix now down the semi simple part. For example, now, Let's just look at the SL2 case, only look at uh, only the SL2. So if you have a group with the semi simple part is the SL2, and you have a row, and how do we use this uh, machine to use this universal monoid to construct, to, um, uh, to construct a monoid associated to those row? Okay, so let's, uh, uh, you still can do this case, but it's gonna take a while. So let's just uh, stick on uh, the SL2 case. Okay, so I'm gonna work on the dual group set first. So for the dual group set, I'm still working on the, the dual group of the SL2 is the PGL2. And uh, we take the simply connected version, which is dual SL2. So I take this lambda n is to be the weight of, uh, this is gonna be the highest weight of the symmetrical nth power of SL2C. Oh, sorry, I don't, uh, well, I don't need, uh, sorry. I don't need uh, the dual group at this moment. Just, uh, just on the group set first. I will move to the dual set later. So uh, the SL2 is uh, uh, simply connected. I just consider the uh, symmetrical S power, the group representations uh, for, the algebraic representations for the SL2 at this moment. So this is a symmetrical power. And um, we're gonna have, uh, uh, oh, let me just uh, think about later a little bit. So, oh yeah, I still take the T prime to be the torus, the Z, pr Z prime is the center, uh, T prime is the torus, the G prime is the SL2. Uh, I can replace all the SL3 in my previous example by the SL2 and run this machine again. We construct this M plus is the two by two. So as my early comment, uh, all the other monoids are gonna give us, uh, come from this uh, 
fiber product of this two by two case. Okay, so in order to, uh, uh, let's see what is, uh, uh, how do we associate to uh, lambda for every lambda, for every highest weight, how, how do we associate uh, a uh, monoid? Okay, so let's see. I need uh, the dual side first. Oh. Let's take a C, C. This should be C. Yeah, I'm correct here, I'm correct. I want to take the C first. So this lambda N is a character of the dual group. Okay, so, and uh, we start from the dual set first, the NN uh, representations of SL2C. Okay, and for this Harris the weight, and this, uh, the dual group of SL2C is uh, PGL2. So this is a co-vector, uh, sorry, this is gonna give us a co-character of the, the joint one. So we're gonna have uh, a co-character to the uh, the joint the torus of the, the joint group, which is the PGL two, and uh, that torus is isomorphic to the GM, and in this case, it just does the nth power. So this is give us a lambda n. Okay, and uh, for this map, we can extend, this is over the multiplications. We also can extend to the uh, alpha lines. So uh, the construction is falling from these uh, diagrams. We have this set, the M plus goes to uh, the GMR, is the organizations of this monoid, which is this GIT quotient we discussed here. So in our case, this R is equal to one. And the pi is the GIT quotient. And for this part, we want to, our contribute, first uh, we have this uh, uh, alpha line is from, uh, is the extensions for this GM. And we have these adjoint groups here. So this is uh, lambda n. Okay. And in general, this will be isomorphic to, to GMR. But here is R is one, so this is exactly our lambda n. And this is what we want to construct here. Okay. So this uh, target monoid with a construct is just the fiber product of these two guys passing through this uh, uh, GM, the GMR. So in the other words, we can define the M lambda is AM So let's take this is the pi plus to distinguish with the, the left pi. So this is uh, the fiber product that we take. And we have two maps, one is a pi plus here, and one is the lambda n. And now we have a clear definition for the pi plus in this situation, which is exactly the determinant. So we have this is determinant g equal to a to the nth power. Okay. So we have a set. So uh, now we have uh, this monoid. And now let's see, for this type of monoid, uh, the unit group is uh, not, uh, uh, is quite different uh, in this situation. Of course, the semi-simple part is still the SL2, but uh, the unit group is actually not. We know at least that you have a, a center of dimensional one.
So uh, we have uh, two cases here, depending on what is our M. If M is uh, uh, even, okay, if M is even, we can take the half, and if we take this map, this is gonna give us the isomorphism from the GL1 cross SL2 goes to here. And if N is odd, So if we have n is odd, we still have uh, uh, another uh, isomorphism map. So the unit group for this case, uh, depending on the parity, is either GL1 cross SL2 or uh, is the GL2 itself. So uh, let's, uh, like, sorry, let me give me another two minutes and sum up uh, to the calculations of these examples. So uh, what we did here is we start from an arbitrary uh, Hairst with uh, the symmetrical nth power for the SL2C. And uh, using the help of this universal monoid, we construct uh, a two families of uh, uh, this monoid. And uh, the unit group uh, is uh, given by here. And the row is still, the row in this case, let's see what is the dual group. The dual group of the GL, this first one is the GL1 cross PGL2C. And for the second one is the GL2C itself. And the representation is always the, the symmetrical nth power. The symmetrical nth power for the G check. In this situation, it still makes sense. For example, if n is even, okay, if n is even, the, this number is even, this is still projective for the, it's still defined for the PGL2. And for the other part, it doesn't matter. So this is the row we pick up. And we have, uh, this is our group, and this is our representation row, and this is the dual group, and the monoid is uh, same monoid we take here the M lambda N, the fiber product we discussed here. And so this is the whole package. And uh, if you compute the uh, basic function for this tab, I have G, I have rho, you can produce the basic functions. And to check what is the support for these basic functions. The G is here, the row is here. And to check if this is true, belongs to the M lambda rho, F, uh, O, intersect with uh, the, G, uh, the GF. Let's say the G lambda NF. It's depending on what is the N. Okay, so that's the uh, whole structure for the uh, symmetrical nth power of the SL2, okay, and uh, for the monoid and also uh, for the unit groups. So I'm gonna stop here. Sorry, it take us so long. Okay.